Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Justin Graber. I'm here with Breezeway Productions. I'm here at the AFI Film Festival 2019. We're going to be covering I Am Not Alone, talking with some of the key collaborators of the film. Stay tuned. So we're here with the director and um, of I Am Not Alone. I just want to ask, like, what were some of the challenges you faced getting this movie on its feet? Well, a revolution was happening, which was unpredictable, which was beautiful, but which was very difficult to keep up with. Because unlike many other revolutions that happened across the world, uh, the one that happened in Armenia last year wasn't happening in one place, in one square. It was decentralized. Every street had a different kind of story unfolding on it. So keeping up with the activity was a challenge in itself. Okay. Um, is there any, uh, like, like, with so much happening with this revolution, is there anything that you you fear that you may have not been able to implement in, in your movie like do you feel like you've touched on a lot of a lot of things that and stories that were happening right I mean it's always important you know to tell both sides and even though we've been advocates of sort of revolutionary uh, activity in Armenia for a long time it was important for us to tell both sides of the story so one of the successes and strong points of the movie I think is that um, is that we were able to actually encompass both sides. As to what we left out, I would say, you know, there were unsung heroes. You know, there are people who were taking leadership positions on their own intersections in their own ways, and a film can't possibly include, you know, everyone's struggle. Um, there was a, there were, you know, on, at one intersection, mothers had brought their strollers with their babies. At another intersection, kids had gathered for a soccer game. So every intersection literally could have been made into a different movie. Um, so maybe that's the mini miniseries that, that follows. So we wanted to ask you, like, what kind of uh, drew you to this project? We know that you are Armenian as well, um, but like, what other aspects drew you to this project to become like an executive producer and composer? Mm. Yeah, I've never executive produced before this film, so uh, for me it was a new challenge. Um, when I was in Armenia at the tail end of the revolution and realized that there's a real need to get the story out beyond the traditional press um, like BBC Al Jazeera, we were doing press there during the revolution which was great but I knew that most people wouldn't really understand the true value of what had, what had transpired and so that got me into kind of like a need basis to kind of help try to get this film off its ground, get the story about the revolution off the ground and so Gaudin and I uh, started conferring while right literally right after the revolution and he was already shooting the revolution so we uh, just kind of put our heads together and you know and, and, and have incredible other executive producers like Joe Berlinger and Eric Australia and uh, Alec uh, Mohibian and, and you know just a great team, a great sales team, and, and here we are. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of your uh, previous music um, and, like, has a root of kind of political controversy. Um, so. Would you say that like maybe played a part as well in, in your interest in the movie? I mean, my I've always been I've always been interested in justice. Uh, the uh, you know the awareness and rec need for recognition of the Armenian genocide in a well-known democracy and the hypocrisy behind the kind of uh, taboo, taboos denial of it uh, has made me an activist from a young age before I was even a musician so my music always had that angle of it although it's not just that obviously um, and I've been scoring films for the last five six years so it's kind of you know naturally within my wheelhouse as far as composer but but you know trying to help get the film made was a challenge a new challenge for me and meeting you know distributors and sales teams and and, and all of the things that i had never done before but i'm very lucky in terms of the amount of doors that that have opened luckily maybe it's because of the uh, goodwill of the project and and what it's you know what it's about the positive story of a very successful peaceful revolution um it's it's a rare story you know um so so we're very lucky what, what drew you to the film, things like that? Well, through the process of uh, uh, directing The Promise and, and the pre-production, I got to know Karin and Alex and, um, uh, and Creative Armenia uh, and followed what they were doing. And then, yeah, I've been to Yerevan a few times now, so when the revolution broke out, I was very interested and I was in touch with Karin and encouraged them to you know, document it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So um, I've actually seen the film in New York this week and it's fantastic. It just um, encapsulates a country's you know, desire for democracy through this one man and I'm very proud of what they've done and amazed. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about like uh, when it comes to storytelling and movie making, 
um, where does the spark come into play with picking the genre, with picking, like selecting it to be yeah. a, a documentary versus something more theatrical? Well, I think with the, well, particularly with this, uh, you, you know, you realize early on that something is happening and Karine knew uh, Nikolai and so forth and so yeah, I mean almost with a documentary you start off not knowing what's going to happen and, and particularly in this case and start filming and then something comes together or not as the case may be. A feature film is essentially you know all feature films are glorified corpses the story's basically you know the story's dead the film itself is actually dead because you've shot it six months before anyone ever sees it. So there's a there, there, there's a life about documentary that you realize the immediacy of it. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, and with this film, I think this story lends itself for both documentary and feature because um, there's so much inner story still to be told about what took place last year. I'm Lili Tumakunz, the majority leader in the parliament um, after the revolution, but right after the, the revolution I got appointed the Minister of Culture, so in the transitional government um, I was playing a role too. Oh, cool. So yeah, can you talk a little bit more about like the process and them obtaining you for the film? Um, I remember probably a month after the revolution when we formed a new government, Karin came up to me and said, you know, we have this idea, this great idea with Search and we want to document things so that we remember in the future. But we'll see how it comes up later. And I was like, okay, this is a nice idea because the feelings are fresh and the memories are really uh, there. So probably this is the good timing. Though everything was very hectic in the, in the new government and in the new Armenia, we had tons of things to do. But still, uh, we made it, and I'm very excited to see the result because I haven't seen the, movie, the whole movie yet. What kind of uh, challenges did you face uh, with getting this movie on its feet, like uh, from gaining funds and bringing the people together, things like that? Well, the greatest challenge was honestly ha the revolution succeeding in the first place. We'd been trying to tell the story and take part in the story and in the struggle for years and in, in the case of uh, God in decades. Um, so for us, when the revolution happened, it was almost like a production miracle in itself. We were there, we were filming it, we were expecting it to fail like every other attempt had failed. And this time it succeeded almost according to Hollywood standards. So it unfolded like a classic Hollywood script. And we, of course, took the challenge upon ourselves to present it in a way that was true to that and to, to, to nail the dramatic components as hard as possible without overdoing it for the audience who doesn't know much about Armenia.